G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now if you've been watching in the last video we had produced these very nice metal barrels into our lovely Arizona turrets. Now if you haven't seen a video go back and watch it. Yes you need to know that to get here. But anyhow what we're going to do in this video is um, we'll go to the next step which is adding the brass PE so that um, we can get all that nice prettiness on there and we'll be replacing the, uh, the ladder and um, the front section and we'll be putting some very tiny, uh, can you see in there, tiny little fiddly bits on the front there and fiddly bits here and there. It looks daunting but really it's not that hard, you just um, follow the bouncy ball and I'll show you how I did it. Um, and that's, um, that's that horrible ladder. We've got to get rid of that. I've already done that on these other um, other turrets, so it comes off fairly easily. I'll do that first, show you that um, the ladder comes off. Piece of cake. Now, you, you could leave them on, but there is apparently an error, as far as I can tell, as far as Edward tells um, with his kit, in that um, the ladder should always be on the port side of the turrets. Okay, so that's fine if that's number one turret. All right, there's your port. There it is. Uh, this will be your number two turret, okay, so it'll be on the port there. But then you come to um, the rear, and um, these two, and they basically, these two, they um, they have them on the starboard side, you know, because they're just too lazy to change the mould, so it's basically the same as some said. But um, according to what I'm told to do by Edward, and what seems to be correct, is that that should be there, all right? So another good reason to scrape that off, but really there is no comparison. <laughs> Look at um, that uh, plastic, horrible, mouldy thing, and then that's the least close enough to scale as you can get. All right, so we're going to turn this into that. Okay, so what will you need? Well, you'll need to pick up some PE, of course, and I've got the Edward set here, which is quite comprehensive. Um, there are other sets, and I've discussed all of those in detail if you watch the Scuttlebutt video. So um, that's the one I chose, the Edward set, and that's also, I go through that, or what's in it, if you watch the box open review. Now, you will need some CA glue, or, you know, super glue. I use the Zap slow setting stuff because it gives me a lot more time to play around and get things in place. Although, with hot weather lately, it's not a lot of time. But Zap is what I use for the CA glue. Now, I also use PVA glue, which is white wood glue. And amazingly, that will stick brass photo etch to plastic, and it'll also stick brass photo etch to brass photo etch. And that's the only way I've got some of this very fine detail in here. Because if I try to do with CA glue, if it caught and stuck when it wasn't quite in the right position, you'd rip it taking it off and you would destroy the fine detail. So for the fine detail stuff I would prefer to use the white wood glue and I'll show you how that works, what the pitfalls are but then again what the advantages are and also how you can use it basically to tack things in a place and then leave it to set because it does take a while to set. You may have to wait overnight until it's really rock hard but it allows you much more fettling and it's more forgiving than the CA glue. So using these things and also oh you will need so toothpicks, what if you going to do it how I do it? You'll need toothpicks for applying everything because, you know, you don't want to be slathering this stuff on from the bottle. It's too bloody, too gooey. Now, also, you'll need a um, some sort of cutting device for your PE. Well, um, I will use the knife for this because this stuff's pretty small and fiddly. Although I do have a razor blade that I prefer to use and I have a zero and cutting tool. And one of the things that I use that makes it so much easier is my Magic Wax Pencil. Now, I got this from the model shop, although apparently you can get exactly the same things if you go to the um, makeup counter, because this is pretty well a makeup tool as well. And it's just wax. It's not it's not lead or, or clay or whatever. That's actually a kind of wax in there. And it allows you to tap on and pick up photo etch and place it so easily. If you've seen my other videos, you know exactly what I want about. You will see it done in this video. So um, I will show you that shortly. All right, so if you've got all the bits... You are ready to go. Now there's an old panel beaters trick, especially when you're working in curves, because here you've got, you've got a few curves. You've got a few curves happening. You've got curve this way, curve that way, and curve there. So she's, she's pretty curvy, you know? She, she's a bit of a Marilyn Monroe thing happening here. So we want to get in, get that ladder out, but it's sort of all curvy. We can't really get in with a file, a flat file, 
and we, you know, we don't want any flat spots, we want to retain all the curves. Now, there's an old panel beaters trick. If you're needing to file a curve, you actually use a curve file the other way. So, you know, if this is your, your curve that you, you want to get flat, right, your file is curved the opposite way, and that way it rolls on it. You with me? Okay? You don't try and put a flat one on, which is going to create flat spots. You put a curve to a curve and you roll it around. This is an old trick. Right? This is an old bastard trick like me. Okay, so I've got here, you probably can't see, it's just I'm not going to focus, but that actually is curved. That's flat on one side and it's curvaceous on the other. So because I've got a curve on a curve, I can do all kinds of easy and amazing things. So if you're ever working with curves on your models, you're wondering, oh, how the hell do I sand those without buggering them up? Well, curves are easy to work with if you've got a curved file. And of course, a nice little one like this is a little diamond file. Apparently, it's got real diamonds on it, but they're not—they're not well. They're not real diamonds; they're industrial diamonds. They're um, diamond clones, you know. They were—they'll take over the world. These clones, you know, clones, clone attack, take the clones. Yeah. What's that? Star Wars. Yeah. So look, in the time it's taken me to talk and waffle, waffle on, and there's a lot of waffle in my videos. There's been some complaints about that. Guess what? <laughs> Your problem, not mine. It's my video. I'm going to do what I want and do it how I want. You want to watch? Good. Listen to the waffle. You don't want to watch? Piss off! <laughs> I think I've said that before. But uh, no, 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 no. I don't want to upset my viewers. All right, so um, that's just about done, all right? As easy as that. And because I'm using a curve on a curve, you can turn it, you can rotate it. It's as easy as that. So don't be scared about taking things off, all right? That's really not that hard. It really isn't. So, there we go. Now, there will be this little tricky bit in here, which I'll need to attend to, all right? And I'll do that off camera because it's really hard working with friggin' iPads in your face. But you get the idea, all right? So that's basically done. It doesn't take long at all. I'll finish this off, and then we'll buff it up, and you'll see how smooth that's going to come. And that didn't take long at all. And using something like, uh, I've got this little 3M sponge here. Oh, you'll see I've written on there. That's the, when I cut it off the... You get in a great big sponge, and you just cut off pieces you need. And I, uh, I always write down the date, because then there were two or three of the bloody things lying around. Never know which one's the latest one. So, they allow you to go and basically sand complex curves. They're really handy for that. So getting in there, and um, even with my wobbly hands, trying to get in, and look. There you go, compared to there, all right? just like I bought one. Or I probably can get in a little bit there that's going to require a little more sanding, but that's okay, I'll get into that later. That doesn't stop us doing what we need to in the video. In the other turret, well, the ladder went actually in the spot, so you didn't have to be too worried because some of the things got hidden, you can kind of get away with it. But with this one, I'll need that really nice and shiny and smooth, but it's not that far off. I can do that later. Okay, uh, we need to get a ladder in over on this side. Or I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. Yes, we do need to put that ladder on, but hang on, hang on, hang on. We have got a little more rooting around to do yet. Now, at the front, we have to get these um, this PE section in here, okay? Now, it, um, it won't fit just straight over the front of that. It will need you to savagely get in and rip all of that out, okay? And to prove it, I'll just cut that little brass part off and show you why you're going to have to do a bit of major surgery. All right, here's the part that we're going to need, and this is where my Xeron cutter is going to come in really handy, because, um, I mean, you could try and cut these out with your ruddy um, exacto knife and all the rest of it, but uh, these are what these little suckers are built for. And they do such a good job that there's bugger all filing afterwards, believe you me. And they, um, they cut so well because they are so sharp. They are as sharp as my ex-wife's tongue. Well, mother-in-law maybe. As long as you can get them in there. See what you're probably doing, Harry. Can you? Usually you can. I mean, the tips work really well. Right, that's off. And they don't require much cleaning up then, basically, once... Once that's cut, it's um, and require. 
Now again, here's a, another one of these little panel beater tips. If you have a flat file and you've got to do a curve, you don't go, you actually curve in a, you file in an arc. Okay, so there's a couple of pieces there. Actually, that piece there, because we couldn't get to it before, we might be able to get to it now much more easily and cut it off. Alright, so That's looking good, and the bottom one's going to be fairly easy because that's nice and flat. Flatness is good, and there was hardly anything to, um, to come off. And my test always when I've got the PE, assuming it's a size you can actually fiddle with, is to run my fingernail down it. Right. I'm blocking my light, probably. Uh, run my fingernail down it. Now, if it doesn't, my fingernail doesn't catch on anything, I've got it all off. Okay, so oh, that's a tiny bit there. That side's fine. That side catches ever so slightly, so I know there is a puff teeth to come off there. There we go. The uh, fingernail test. Yep, absolutely fine. So that's our little PE part. Okay, now I'll just adjust the lights a bit here. Now to show you what the problem is, now we can use a wax pencil here, I haven't sharpened it yet, but um, look, wax pencil. Boy, this makes your life easy, it really does. So, if you pop that in place, you'll see the plastic shows through, okay? And um, no matter what you do, there'll be bits of plastic. And this is the reason the elevation isn't that good. It's these little scoops here and here and here. They actually prevent the um, barrels from going fully up, which was really annoying. So um, that's one of the reasons for this little brass part, but also because you're going to attach some little frilly bits on there. So let's, um, let's be fairly savage now. We have to cut into this turret. So um, squeezy bum time. Here we go. This I'm going to use just some side cutters. These are actually my uh, my little shear cutters, my little mini shear ones. These are rather nice, but um, any any will do. Now this is where you have to be really brave because you know you know what you're doing, and and I and I sort of do. Well, sometimes there'll be a bit, bit of a debate on that on some of my videos. What's that clown doing now? What the hell is he doing there? How the heck is he going to do that? And then people go, I watched your video and I didn't think you'd be able to pull it off. Yeah, I should know by now. Pulling off is what I do. Okay, so easy as this. It's pretty savage, isn't it? But believe me, you only need leave a little bit around the outside, whatever you do. You could cut it all off, but then you're not going to have much of an area to see a glue. And I found it was going to be a lot easier if I um, left a bit of this. So, as you've, if you've watched the other parts in the series of this Arizona video, there has been a lot of savage cutting. We have really hacked into this kit. But, um, as long as you're careful, as long as you have a plan, know where you're going and what you're doing. Um, can't say that's always the truth with me. But, uh, there you go. Now, this is sort of a bit tricky because you're trying to get these angles. But go slow. There we are. We're just about there. Okay, so as you see, I've cut tiny little things there. I don't want to go too far. Don't want to ruin. I want to cut too far to the edge and put some bloody big, um, big dents and, and plastic stresses. But um, it's getting there. It's not too bad. All right. So what I'm going to do now is test. Okay. So getting my little brass pee. Oh, I don't need my my, my, um, my little pencil really. Can have a look now. It's got to be level with the bottom. So that's um, that's something to test in. So you just need something maybe flat. So you can push that against there and that against there. What do you reckon? We're just about there. I reckon with a bit of filing, that's in. So that and that and that, that's, um, that's not too bad at all. It's a little bit there that I need to get rid of. But easy as that. Alright, so I'll get the, um, the file into that now. 
Um, you don't need to watch that, it'll be boring as batshit. So I'll just file this little sucker up. So as long as I leave a few millimetres along the top there with the CA glue to here to, it'll be bonza. There we go, that's been all carved out, and this is a handy thing to do, you have a toothbrush, get all the little bits of little bits of Scheisenhausen out in there. Bit of German, sorry about that. Um, so that's not looking too bad. Another little trick is when, when you've burred out something like this, best to get the surface back to flat again. So I take my, my flat file and just give that to make sure there's no raised edges that are going to push the PE up. It's also good because filing an area or even sanding an area prior to putting PE on kind of etches it a little bit and everything bonds really nicely. So you don't want the little bastards slipping off afterwards, do you? That would be good, playing around with this in the bathtub and your barrels fall off. No, no, no. All right. So, moment of truth. Has this worked? Have we left enough room? Can I pick it up without bloody falling everywhere? Gee, whiskers here, Eddie. All right, so roughly in place. And then level it up. That's another reason of having that little bit of plastic there still. And um, well, it probably needs to go over that way a bit. See, so knowing where it's going to go is going to be very vital later on. So there you go. Okay, so that is a perfect fit now, and there is no plastic showing through those holes at all. Isn't that lovely? All right, so this will be the first thing we'll see our glue, and I'll do this now because that'll be a good idea to let this glue and set, and then I can cut out all the little fiddly bits. And um, then I know when I go to put them on, I'm not going to knock this bloody thing off. Okay, so let's get CA glue out. All right, the zap glue is in my little plastic receptacle here. And um, I've made myself a little jig. Because it's got this knobbly thing sticking out here, you can't really put it on your bench and it's at level. So I found I rested actually on this, um, this paintbrush and my sanding stick. I've got a nice level area that hopefully I'll be able to very easily match up the base there and then flip that into place without rooting it. So we'll see. We'll see. They so say it's um, you get a little bit of play time but not a lot with this CA glue. And it is going off under the lights. It really is. Okay. So CA gluing this is where your toothpick is so handy. So CA glue's on carefully picking up our PE. And we need to get that level, so we know that's level. So it needs to be centered correctly. And did we do it? Looks pretty good. Whoa! Yes. So that is in place. All right, so we know that's level at the bottom. And she is on. Okay. She is on. Now there's a little bit of lip at the top here, don't worry about that, because there's another little part that goes across there. We'll pop that on shortly. So there we go. Stage one. We have got the new brass front done. One last bit of um, preparation work in stage one, as I'm sort of calling it. When I um, when I did this turret, there's these little this little thing here, those bloody cows. Gee, I'm sick and tired of cows. There's these little things at the back here. I don't know if they're um, Windows, hatches, or little vents, but there, there, there's things. There's things apparently that goes on the uh, the back here. Now, when I um, when I did uh, mine, I didn't really bother about removing this tiny bit of plastic here, which on our turret, oh, this is where we've got to. On our turret, that's um, just this sort of tiny little area here. There's really not much of it. So there's um, there's a little lip there you could pull off if you wanted to. But it's kind of a bit hard to get in there with the file because you've also got to get underneath a little rangefinder there. So quite frankly, I didn't bother. I really didn't bother. They um, they don't look that bad to me as long as their PE part will fit. So that's what we'll do now. And and essentially my sort of stage one, stage two, whenever I'm doing super detailing, is um, stage one, remove anything that's not required. You know, bugger that off. And then stage two, start putting in the... Um, the photo edge. So that's why we've, we've already put the front on. Right, let's get on with it. Stop bloody waffling, Harry Denny. Let's get on with the good stuff. This is fret number two in the, um, the Edward set for the, um, the 
Arizona. And the part that we're interested in here is part number 101. Well, we need three of these little things. And they are the little frilly bits. And they just stress up that, um, that turret. And um, they look a little bit scary. But believe me, they're, they're pretty easy to put in. And I've got a way to do that. So, without further ado, let's um, cut some of these out. Now, I've got the, um, the little white card Edward supplies. And I'm using that on top of my cutting mat for some rigidity. Now, um, these cut pretty close to the bottom there. And then you just got to cut the sides off. And I'm just doing it with a razor blade technique. Because that's, um, that works for me. So, um, talk amongst yourselves. I'll cut these out and a few of the other bits. And then um, we'll get together at the end where I glue all the little suckers on. Okay, I've got all my parts cut out and I filed them up and so they're all prepared. Now um, you may have noticed I started putting things in this little container. This is just a paint container I had. You know, it's just one of my little, it comes in my little salads actually. It um, has a little salad vinegar and I use these little paint mixers and that's a handy place while you're cutting PE fret off or PE parts off the fret to, to store them, otherwise the damn things will disappear and blow away. You just got to sneeze and half your PEs on the floor. So I do that, I put them in something and, and that's handy because it's dark. Now um, you know I've been using the wax pencil, it's just, it's a boon. I love this little wax pencil. Very handy for picking up sort of tiny frilly things like this ladder. And then find out exactly where it's got to go. And drop it in and gently let it off, okay? And you get it in the right spot, of course, but um, it, it actually it's better when it's got a tiniest bit of some sort of glue on. And this is also a part that I would use the white wood glue, right? I would use this rather than CA, because if you did what I just did then, when oops, click, dropped it with CA, you bug it. That would be stuck there and you'd ruin it. And CA glue would come up between all those little frilly holes and you're stuffed. Whereas the white wood glue, much more forgiving, will be able to then, once you've got it on with the white glue, glue you'd... Uh, You'd be able to slide it, you know, so you're supposed to go there, you dickhead, okay? And um, and then once it's a bit tacky, you can get in there with a wet brush of um, Windex or just a bit of water and take any excess off. So that allows you to do those frilly bits a lot better. We've already got the front piece on. Um, these these little frilly bits are going to go on there. And then you've got some parts here you've got to fold. They're the only folding I'll do, and it's a piece of cake. Hardly need the folding tool for that, but I probably will use it. Then there's um, this little strip here which is that tiny little one there. That's going to go across the front. There, um, oh, the rails. I didn't pick the rails out. I usually don't put the rails on until I do all the rails because I usually knock rails off. So I don't do any railing at all until I've completely finished and I can paint a part and put it aside. Because if I'm going to be touching a part again or any sub-assembly and it's got a bit of railing on, I'll knock it off. I mean, just go and watch my video on the um, SU-152. Number of times while I try to do that video, I knock the friggin' rails off and had to re glue them back on. It's really not much point. So I tend to leave tiny things like that, which will fall off. But the rest of this, they're, 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 even my ham fisted bumpiness, shouldn't be able to knock them off. Okay, well, um, let's start um, cementing on the parts to these turrets. I'm all ready here. I've got my parts laid out. Now I'll do the folding first. Now, Edward, if you use the Edward PE, they give you the score lines on the side that you need to fold up towards yourself. So for these tiny little pieces here, which, which go around the uh, range finders, on one side it's got a bit of a bit of a um, indentation and a black sort of blob, a brown blob. That's going to go on the outside because if you flip it over, as I've done with that one, you'll see there's two fold lines. So it's as easy as that. Now, you could put this in the um, foldy tool. We will do it, but really it's so easy. You could bend that with a pair of money tweezers, but yeah. If you haven't seen Foldy Tool before, again, wax pencil is rather handy for uh, doing this. So the Foldy Tool just allows you to put the piece in, line it up to the mark that Edward gives you. Alright, easy as that. And then with your trusty razor blade, which came with my Foldy Tool. This one's so small. There you go. Up she goes, and you bend vertical and a touch more and it springs back. Okay, so that's that side and then being very careful you do the other side. 
And it's a matter of getting everything lined up correctly. But those little score lines by Edward really help because they, um, not only are they where you're going to fold, but they, they also get it started for you. So something like this, although I'm using the folding tool, you could do this with a pair of tweezers for this one, really. Because it's getting a bit tricky to get the, uh, the raised blood under there, but there you go. And again, just past vertical and it always springs back. So that's one of those. <laughs> and it is so tiny. Alright, let me show you how to do the bigger one. Again, the larger pieces have got a tiny little fold line that is just hardly seeable, but it's on the this time it's on the side with the brown and, and all the, um, the sort of embossing or whatever it is that it puts down there, a little relief work. It's a relief, I tell you. So, but the principle is the same. Take it in, find the point where it's going to fold, you know, line it up, because you really only get one go at this. You, you get um, very confident and um, you get uh, quite, you know, what's the word, confident. You get quite confident at it. Can't think of another bloody adjective. Sorry, my adjective book's full. That's it. All right, so, ta-da. And that's all that one is. It's just a little little L-shaped piece. So that's all the folding required for the turrets. Piece, a proverbial piece. The only thing that you might want to do is this piece here, which is going to go around there. Well, there is a slight... Oh, don't bugger everything here already. There's a slight curvature to that. And if you were really fussy, you could probably put that on something and curve it. But quite frankly, the way I'm going to put that on there, we won't need to bother. It will curve and tack into place. So let's stop waffling, Harry Houdini. Let's get on with the gluing. We're an extreme close up now, so just hold your breath. Don't bump anything. Now, one thing that I like to do is um, cut out all my pieces of PE. You know, rather than do one at a time, cut, files, glue, cut, file, glue. It, um, I prefer to do all the CO gluing in one hit if I can. And that way, that's the process, and I'm just working with one task at a time. So one task was remove the plastic, one task is cut out all the PE and prepare it, and my next task is to cement it on. Now I'll do the CA glue first, and then I'll do the PVA glue, because PVA glue will take much longer. So one thing to do is lay out your parts, see what you've got, okay? And I've kept them all safe in my little receptacle. And by laying them out, you'll make sure that you've got them in the right position. So like, I had to figure out how this was going to fit on. And I had to refer back to the instructions and this, um, this little dimply bit in the middle here goes to the front of the turret. So that means that wobbly bit at the back must go to the back. At least that's how I'm going to do it. And also make sure you've got it up the right way because a lot of them have got relief on one side and they're um, flat on the other. Things like this were hard to see which side, if it mattered. But when I slid them, when I put my finger on and slid them on the paper, one side, one way up, they slid freely, which meant the back was nice and smooth. The other way up, they didn't. They had relief. Aha! Uh -huh. So the relief is what you want because that's part of the detail. So it was a matter then of flipping them over and making sure I've got them correct. So all I'm saying here is kind of get organised and pre-prepare with your PE because it's one of those things, once it's on, it's a bugger to take off and to re-cement. It really is. So it's best to prepare, prepare. And I know we've been on over nearly half an hour now and we haven't hardly glued anything. Well. Preparation is what this is all about. Being organised, knowing where everything goes, that's the secret to um, working with PE. And that's kind of what scares some people because you think you just go in and do it. Yeah, well, you sort of can, and some people might have success, but I have almighty stuff-ups when I do it that way. I find it's better to have really everything laid out, check and double-check. Remember my woodworking teacher, Mr. Beaver? Yes. Measure twice, cut once. Yes, he was right. Okay, hopefully we won't get too much wobbliness for doing this, but um, right, now the order. Now, that will have both CA and wood glue. Those will have wood glue, that'll have CA, that'll have wood glue, might touch up with CA. But these four pieces here are only CA, so I will do those first, and they're relatively easy. Now, the reason I'm picking those four to start is they've just got flat sides. They're, there's nothing to them. Really? Okay. Um, so they're pretty easy to um, put a bit of PE on, away we go. So let's let's have a go at those first. Now the easiest one is going to be this one. Again, I work from easiest to hardest, because you start on the hard, frustrating stuff, and then um, by the time you get the easy stuff, you're really annoyed and pissed off and had problems and you'll gaff it all up. But if you start on the um, easy stuff, you'll have some joy, get some confidence, and away we go. All right, let's waffling. Let's glue some of these guys on. Parts 
parts are now CO glued in and they're relatively easy to put on you know they fit in the exact spot here's my wax pencil pretty easy to identify where they're going to go where we go now the harder bit is like this one here which is you know you could try and bend it to a curve uh, but that believe me is actually harder because then how it is if it goes on a curve and goes on upside down when you put it on it'll be even worse so we use a combination of the wood glue and the zap to accomplish this. So first off, we need to position that part, and it's going to be a lot easier to position that if I put a tiny dab of wood glue on, which is not going to be as savage as a tiny dab of CA, because we have to use little bits here, we wouldn't be able to use a lot of glue. So a small bit of CA is going to go off really fast, and probably putting this on, see, so you know, that'll be it. It'd be stuck if that was CA glue. But this being um, wood glue, I've got time. And there's bloody rivets there that get in the way and there's all kinds of things that are really annoying. So getting that in position with the wood glue is a lot easier. And if you totally cocked it up, you could use water or even Windex and take that off. So I think that's right. As you can see, it's sort of holding already. Because the wood glue has a tackiness. Okay, so that's the solution there. And what we do is we wait until that wood glue is pretty well set there. And then I can CA glue, put little dabs of CA glue on either end, bend those down, bingo bongo, that's done. So that's the easy way of doing that. Now, the next fiddliest bit is these. And again, if you try to CA glue those in, oh, you'd have to be spot on. And I'm not. So a little bit of wood glue. And I put this like that around. Okay, you with me? I'm going around. I'm not actually putting it on the face, I'm putting it on the edge there. Because you're not going to need much. And it doesn't matter if it's blobby on the inside, you can wipe that out later on. So there we go, putting it around. Okay, there's a little bit here went over, don't need that. Don't need it on the face. Okay, now that that's on there, I've got all the time in the world. Wow, I've got quite a few minutes. And what I can do is I can fart around and position this and get it exactly as I want, which I wouldn't have the luxury of with CA glue. Okay, so is that clear? That part's in, all right. So I'll go on and get these other ones on. And the beauty is, after they've tacked on with the white glue, you can come back and I'll probably go on the underside and I would maybe put tiny dots of CA glue in there just to make sure they're going to stay on for the rest of their life. Okay, so there's a bit of shies in there. Um, but that's how you could get that tiny little fiddly bit on. As you see, she's not falling off. That wood glue will make it stick. It might not stick forever, and that's the thing. If you just relied on the wood glue, well, you don't know. You know, it might work. It probably won't. <laughs> but um, wood glue to position and then CA glue to finally cement. That is my secret. Okay, I've allowed that an hour for the wood glue to get tacky and set into place, which now means I can get things to settle down because those edges are popping up on all these pieces. Um, my frilly bits are in place. All I need to do really is tack them, tack them in, so that's an easy job. A little bit of CO glue on the inside, tack them in. Tiniest bit, you really don't need much at all because you know it's, it's basically going to hold in place. And again, just working on the inside, tiniest bit. If there's any little gaps, it'll fill. So that should be fine. That should basically. This chair hasn't spilled through. No, it hasn't. That should be fine. That's basically um, done there. Now, we need to get these rails here down, or whatever they are. There's some sort of, I don't know, there's an electrical cable or whatever it is. So, because they're raised at the moment, I can get in there and then just hold it. Uh, so, it's just tacked in the middle with the wood glue, which is still flexible, and this thing can move a little bit. 
So be careful you don't pull on it too much because you can reef it out. It also allows a bit of adjustment in case it's slightly wrong. So tiniest bit of uh, CA glue there pushed in between the plastic and the brass part and a bit of pressure and a few seconds and bingo bongo. That's it. And that'll be set in place. So I'll work my way around all those and the same with this one at the front here which is a bit hard to do on camera because I've got to get in a weird angle. Tiny bit of CA glue underneath, push it down, hold it in place, everything is then set. Here we are, we're at the end of it and that's how the turret used to look. Right? That's just all plastic, whoops, and it's boring. Fumble fingers here. Now this is what we've ended up with and I think you'll find that's a bit nicer. What do you reckon? Okay, all the bits are on there. Um, probably still tidy up a little bit of the CA glue. Might be a little bit of tidying up and sanding to do. That's okay, I'll get to that. I'm not gonna mess with it now. I want that all to nice set, okay? And then, last but not least, throw a bit of primer on it, and that's what you get. And that's when it really starts to come along. And that's where you see, there's a fingerprint. <laughs> oh, I'll have to get in and just scribe and sand that out. That's not a problem. Not a real issue, um, but basically, once you have got all your little fiddly bits on, see how they um, see how all those little bits show up and everything, and everything looks good. The ladders pronounced there and sitting in the range finder. It all works. It all comes together really nicely, and that is how you super detail a turret. Well, that's at least how I do it. So I hope there was something in there for you, and that I hope you enjoyed it. It's been a long one, I know, but there's just so much to do in this sort of thing. All right, that's it. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini. Mm -hmm.